And what's going on, you guys? Grand Horizons. Grand focus to you all. Come to you in peace. Come to you in nothing but peace. And we are here again with another segment. Right, we're here again with another segment of Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys by Juanza Kung Jufu. Part 2, Chapter 2. When we left off at, we were explaining, um, I may left off by talking about how the education system through third and fourth grade into seventh and eighth. Um, disable the young black male's academic his his focus and his enlightenment um, academically in school I come to you all in peace positivity and love stay with me Serene. Do you remember all those? Chapter two. Fourth grade failure center. Let's begin. Reviewing the scores. 14, 14 degree decreased, four improved, and two remain constant. The median beginning per, percentile was 52. The ending was 29. The median change in reading was 3.1 years. Only one child was able to improve his reading by five years or more during the sample read period. There were two children who started at 98, 92% dropped to 35, 24% respectfully, respectively. We had two geniuses, only to lose them five years later. The boy who started at 63 dropped to a four and has stayed at home and watched Sesame Street. So they're talking about test scores um, and then throughout the years remaining with these kids and then seeing how they were doing academically throughout the years and you see geniuses at 98 and 92 percent dropped to i believe he said 34 no that's 35 and 24 percent um dr nancy arnaz in her book implementation of this segregation as a discriminatory process reports in 505 school districts in alabama georgia south carolina mississippi and arkansas which had classes for those labeled as educatable mentally retarded over 80% of those students so labeled were black, although less than 40% of the total school district was black. She further found out although the bias-based IQ test was a major factor producing racial disproportions, the vulnerability of black children to the labeling process persisted into subsequent classification stages. The study indicated that disproportionately more of the eligible black children were actually recommended for placement into special classrooms, while disproportionately fewer eligible white children were recommended for such placement. A large percentage of the black children in the study were found to be males. Additionally, several studies have found that although African Americans have significantly lowered scores, the scores of African American males are demonstrably lower than those of African-American females. Nathan Hare, in his sample of 10 and 11-year-olds, further found African-American females to have outperformed their male counterparts on measures of achievement orientations. His investigations revealed a hierarchical academic performance structure in which Euro-American females in the middle and African-American males lowest. The negative consequences for the African-American males is further highlighted in dropout and push-out statistics 
African American constitute 15% of the total pool public school enrollment, yet were 21% of the dropouts, with African American males constituting the highest category. Thus, the pool of potential college bound students is effectively reduced. In, in 1976, there were only 74 African American men with at least four years of college for every 100 African American women with equivalent credentials. Among college bound high school seniors in 1978, there were only 66 African American males for every 100 females. An African American child care conference conducted in September of 1981 in Columbus, Ohio, noted that in 1950, home had the greatest impact on children, followed closely by school, church, peer groups, and television. In 1980, home re remained number one, but peer group had removed into second position, followed closely by television, which is predicted to be number one in 1985. We're in 2023. Look how television and movies have shaped now. Where don't forget music, <coughs> school, and church. And I'm just gonna re repeat that for you. In eight, 1980, home remained number one, but peer groups, which is like friends and shit, had moved into second position, followed closely by television, which is predicted to be number one by 1985. School and church. In as brief as period as 30 years, much has happened to the family structure in review of the 1980 findings. Looking at the home, 62% of all African-American children live with a single parent. Considering television, we all should agree George Jefferson of the Jeffersons and J.J. Evans of Good Times are not the role models we need to defeat the conspiracy. The church has not been able to capture the minds of our youth, and specifically boys. I will hope Concerned ministers and church members will look anywhere and ask themselves why youth and male youth specifically have not been attracted. I also urge that they study the success of the nation of Islam, specifically under the period and under the leadership of the honorable Elijah Muhammad of the African ancient of ancient African religions in which of distinction was made between religion and spirituality and in which your source was inside you with today not tomorrow being the greatest day of your life so what he's talking about how come christianity and churches doesn't um how come they don't draw near how come the males aren't attracted to it specifically and how come it's so-called more female because the pastors are fucking these females and getting paid off the finesse. We gonna let God judge that. Um, recent Equal Employment Opportunity Commission (EEOC) data revealed that 83% of all elementary school teachers in 1976 were females. White only. 10.1% of this number were African American females. African American males constituted only 1.2% of the total. 17% of the elementary teachers who were males. Further, 45.7% of all, all full-time secondary school teachers were female, with, with African-American females making up 5.1% of the total, African-American males accounting for 3.2% of the 54.3% male participation rate. When teacher aides were considered, the male-female imbalances increased. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission data indicate that 95.5% of all teacher aides were female, with 20% of this number being African American. African American males accounted for only 1.3% of the remaining 4.5% male teacher aides. Based on these figures, it could be concluded that a majority of African-American males could spend an entire career in the public schools. Private schools are not very different and have very little interactions with an African-American male teacher, counselor, and or administrator. During the past eight years, speaking six times a week, my travels have not taken me to one male kindergarten teacher. Men normally enter, men normally enter the picture 
in the upper grades when the conspiracy is well underway. Men can usually be found as janitors, physical education teachers, or administrators. It is a positive experience to find male academic instructors, especially in the primary division. Furthermore, with so few male teachers, we can ill afford to lose any to homosexuality. More will be said about the complex subject in the following chapters. This complexity of conspiracy goes beyond the lack of male teachers in the racist, irrelevant curriculum designed to maintain the status quo versus problem solving. It also includes the quality and the continuity of the teaching staff. Many people are quick to declare public schools incapable of teaching African-American children. I have been to many public schools where I witnessed some of the finest educational experiences public or private. I make it a habit to visit the classrooms after conducting a workshop in the same public schools that many of us are equipped to denounce. I often, I often experience different teaching styles and levels of compo, com, compo, competencies? Competencies. My apologies. I just got up. How can we say public schools cannot levels? How can we say public schools cannot educate our children? When I visited a public school where fifth grade teachers had 85% of their children reading above grade level, but more importantly, had them excited about learning. The problem cannot be easily solved with the condemnation of public schools, racism, or lack of male teachers. To pinpoint the problem, we must look at the continuity. The above teacher indicated to me that her students in the fourth grade last year were turned off because their prior teacher did not care. She also indicated to me that she feared that the she feared the choice between the two available sixth grade for me how superlative their children previous teachers was, but quick to mention who are their stalwarts. This scenario is completed by the comments for this scenario is completed by the comments from the children about which teachers, group, children, parents, teachers, and administrators recognize quality. Therefore, you are a member of the conspiracy if you allow a child to sit in classroom one extra day with an unconcerned teacher. Principals have informed me that they've placed their best teachers, including men in the upper grades where the most disciplined children are to maintain order. This band-aid approach is a part of the conspiracy. It should appear obvious that if you stop the problem in the primary division, you will not have this problem migrating to the upper grades. So all we just read was discussing um, him evaluating children from early on. Then he started to go to high school and evaluate them. And he started to talk to different teachers, administrators, and principals. And he's discussed that um, how teachers how they were rearranged or arranged teachers based off weaknesses to strengths um, and upper classes this you know who can you know band-aid it you know that remember that coach that was always hard or that teacher that was mean or bitchy they do it that way um, when he's in, in what Juwan's saying is why not put those teachers first on the kids through third fourth fifth sixth grade where they already build the mentality um, mentally to um, already know and have that ability to keep or in that excitement to keep wanting to learn and I'm um, so forth and so on but let's continue um, when I have shared this observation the response has been but what would we do in the meantime with the upper grade children the solution then would be to make the staff changes and accept and live with the problem for three years until all those upper grades graduated. The problem is magnified with desegregation. When inner city schools is this, this, in, when inner city school in desperation to achieve racial balance allow this proportionate number of non-black black black teachers to teach the primary division. While this is occurring, <coughs> some of the better upper grade, some of the better upper grade teachers of all races become increasingly frustrated, suffer from teacher burnout, and contemplate retirement. I conjure more teachers to remain with each passing year. The problem can be minimized 
when public school parents realize the prime difference between them and the private school parents is that one pays directly and the other through taxes. School still belongs to parents, and if parents recognize qualitative, qualitative differences in their teachers and are not satisfied, they can organize with other parents to either have the teacher removed or keep their children home. As a result, the school will lose money and be forced to remove the teacher. I have also seen concerned creative teachers develop arrangements with their principals through which they have ensured continuity by placing the most competent teachers in the primary division. The fastest and the greatest influence on most male youth are the streets. There is a direct correlation between age and street time. The transition from the primary division to the intermediate and upper division parallels the increased street time. Street time is increases. Street time increases as male youth become older because most parents spend less time and give more freedom to their children. Eugene Perkins in his book Home is a dirty street paints the picture. Summer mornings never appear to change. The quickly, they quickly become a part of j j colony, get colony tradition, a pervasive episode of hopelessness and poverty. What was the, tr what was true yesterday is more than likely to be true today. There are more same decrepit structures basking under the sun with their frayed window shades half drawn and the odor of hominy grits, fried pork, and burnt toast seeping out into the almost death-like air. On hot days, one can see fatigued ebony faces protruding out of the windows to gain relief from the morning humidity and the stenchy alleys uncovered with broken wine bottles, empty beer cans, urine, and the feces of stray dogs and unwanted people and the worried people waiting on the street corners to catch the crowded buses which take them to work, and the school-aged children who leave home before they have eaten breakfast, and the whimpers of babies who are still hungry from yesterday's shortage of milk, and the dispossessed men who meal in front of taverns waiting to quench their hunger with anything that can help them escape their pain and their frustrations, and the hustlers, pimps, street men, and other social outcasts who serve as models for our young and the blue squadron flashing down the street on the blaring on the fire truck answering calls of distress. And there are the dirty streets, always the dirty streets, where get colony, children make their home, a home that has an asphalt floor, tenements for his wall, and a door which locks them in front the rest of the world. So what he talked about is uh, this Break it down what schools could do to provide better structure for students, especially black boys. And what I just read from you, I'm going to repeat the guy's name again for you, is uh, from Eugene Perkins. And this is called from a book. This is from a book called Home is a Dirty Street. And all he's just speaking about, if you know what it is, you know what I'm saying? We all come from, I don't know, I'm not, a nice amount of us, even if you're in Africa, Nigeria, Haiti, Jamaica, Hawaii, right? Uh, we, we know what the poverty tastes like. Even if your skin just a little lighter than mine, we still melanated, right? We don't burn from the sun. You don't have to put sunscreen on, whatever like that. So um, we, just, we just talk with color boys. The streets constitute an institution in the same way that the church, school, and family are conceived as institutions. They all have a set of values and norms to govern and reinforce their existence. Of course, the social structure of the street lacks the sophistication these other institutions have. Nevertheless, it is an institution because it helps to shape and control behavior. And it is on the streets where the black child receives the basic orientation to life. The streets become his primary reference because other institutions have failed to is the other institutions have failed to provide him with the essential skills he needs to survive in the get colony. I think that probably like gentr for chasing colonies. I don't know, but um, let's continue. And for the child to survive the colony, he must undergo a rigorous apprenticeship that will enable him to compensate for the lack of guidance from other institutions and adults. He becomes a student of the asphalt jungle concrete jungle because that is where he can learn the skills he needs to survive 
when black children are not compelled to attend school and often when they are, they usually can be found in the streets. The streets become their text, instructor, and subject matter. The curriculum for the concrete institution incorporates many of the same courses that are found in the formal school setting, sociology, political science, history, biology, and even the physical sciences. However, unlike the school, the courses in the street institution are structured around the community norms and are more binding on its members. Its sociology consists of studying the so-called pathology ghetto. Political science is learned from the unscrupulous exploits of corrupt politicians, history from years of discrimination and economic depreciation, biology from youth smoking marijuana and having sex in dirty alleys, and the physical science are taught by learning how to endure elements unfit for human consumption. And the the and the theoretical theoretical references for the street institution reflects on how the people actually live and not how others would like them to function. There are no some there there are no semester breaks, no summer vacations for the study in the ghetto. Oh, so he's saying a ghetto colony. So he's saying a get colony is a continuous cycle which never stops, not even in the face of death. The values of the street institution are shaped from the physical and psychological manifestations of the ghetto colony. From these manifestations, certain lifestyles are created that are exemplified by the instructors of the street institutions. The instructors consist of hustlers, pimps, street men, militants, gang leaders, and working men. And though these men do not have master's or PhD degrees, their credentials have been earned from actual experiences and not from sterile laboratories of formal academic institutions. The fourth grade failure syndrome has been targeted as a pivotal year in a conspiracy to destroy black boys. The transition from the primary grade to the intermediate and upper grades has many implications. The decline in male performance can be attributed to the less than desired teacher competency in the primary division. Few male teachers, parental apathy, and increased peer pressure, and greater emphasis of mass media. The high performance level of black boys in the primary division is not the result of quality teaching, but a natural raw ability. The poor development of this ability is illustrated in their lack of enthusiasm to learn, low self-esteem, and poor self-discipline, and in the manifested, not created, in upper grades. In conclusion, it is very difficult to be a man if you do not see if you do not see positive male role models. African American boys who do not receive quality instruction do not have father present, who do not have father presence, nor teachers, male, nor conspiracy conscious African American ministers are left with the, with the incompetent teachers, the empathetic teachers, the parents, mass media, and then the streets. We are at war. We are at war for the minds of our young boys. We are, at, are, we are attempting to defeat the conspiracy. The Daryls of the world deserve an opportunity to grow and develop into manhood. And we'll be back again. It's called male seasoning. And that word, you guys would think I was you think I was just having, like I said, I just got up. But the word I was, y'all thought I was having struggle reading. I think he probably did that word himself. So look at my middle finger, wherever my fingers placed, and then look at the tip of my fingers. And if you zoom in, you can see the G H E T C O L O N Y. That's how you spelling it. I'm thinking it's a word, but he combining ghetto and colony and becoming and making one word and i hope you guys and i hope all of you guys enjoy this